I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. There are many ways you can improve the appearance of your furniture without refinishing. This is especially important when it comes to family heirlooms. Most of the techniques I demonstrate here use products that are readily available at your locally owned hardware store. So enjoy the videos and your assignment for this weekend will be to use these techniques on the piece of furniture that's looking tired and neglected. Good luck. Let me know how it works out. This is a nice little desk. It's not an antique. It's an old reproduction. And it's been found in a barn here in Gorham. It's been there for many years. And what I want to show in this video, I want to find out how good this piece can look just using regular consumer products that are available to you at your local hardware store. With this particular piece, the first thing we're going to do is vacuum. I've assembled everything here I think I need for the job and everything here is available at your local hardware store. I have a, a, a commercial type de-cleaner, de-greaser. I have some bleach because I'm going to uh, clean the bottoms of the drawers, the back and everything with this mild bleach solution to kill any mildew that might be there. I have yellow carpenter's glue because I've got to glue this drawer together. Then I've got a scratch cover, which I'll go over with, with hopefully will hide any scratches and uh, other marks or scrapes. And in that same vein, I also have these uh, wax sticks and a uh, marker. I have steel wool, which I'll use also to apply the scratch cover and uh, probably the uh, beeswax polish also. Did I uh, mention that you need a clamp? I don't think so, but you can get this at your local hardware store. You can 
wipe off the excess glue with uh, just a damp rag. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is go over this uh, with the magic marker. Uh, the scratch cover is going to take care of a lot of minor things, but there's some things I've seen that I want to hit with the marker first. Like, there's just some light edges along here, along here. Now you're thinking, Tom's not going to paint that raw wood where the veneer is missing. Well, yes I am. Uh, remember, we're only using tools from the hardware store, and I will stain that, and it, at, at any later date, it can be repaired. Now I'm going to use a scratch cover. I think the scratch cover is basically an oil polish uh, with stain in it. The theory being that the stain is only going to affect the little minor areas, the little scratches, where uh, the finish is gone. And I want to use a 4 aught steel wool to apply it. Now I'm going to wipe this down. This is an, an old rag that's sort of saturated in oil polish in that off you can, and I use it for just this purpose. Okay, I've let the scratch cover dry for a couple of hours, and now I'm going to uh, wipe it down really well with just some regular uh, paper towels. You can see all the stuff that comes off. All right, you can see, you know, how much polish, uh, scratch cover polish is on these paper towels. I'm going to take two more. I really want to make sure that all the excess scratch cover is gone. I want to wipe it, you know. I'm still seeing a little bit. That's really good, though. It's coming up. Yeah. It's almost gone. Now, here's a little area on the drawer, actually two little areas here, that the uh, scratch cover didn't take care of. So I'll just go back with the marker. You know, I think that this uh, little ding on the drawer front here uh, might benefit from use of the wax stick. A wax stick will uh, rarely make a you know, defect go away, but it definitely uh, takes the curse off of it, and uh, it's a great improvement. I just realized uh, I re-glued the drawer, but never tried it back in the cabinet. Uh, not bad for the first try. It's a little tight there at the end, but you know I'm not inclined to do anything about that right now. This thing has been in a barn for years, and uh, it just may need to dry out a little bit, so I may give it away. But in the meantime, what I will do is wax everything. And what I mean is by wax everything, I want to wax the drawer runners. I have a, just a stub of an old candle here. Now, you can't buy an old candle stub at the hardware store, but you can buy a new candle or paraffin wax. So I want to wax everywhere that wood touches wood. Uh, so the final step here will be to go over it now with the uh, beeswax polish. And uh, I really like this polish. It leaves a really nice uh, sheen and seems to 
keep that sheen for a while. A lot of times I'll use this, I'll use the full out steel wool like you saw me use with the scratch cover. But I already did, you know, I did the steel wool, so now I can just apply it with a rag. Now I'll turn the rag around to a, a nice uh, clean area, relatively clean area of the rag. I want to make sure I wipe off all the excess polish. I'm going to leave it laying on the surface. All right, I'm going to uh, let this dry during lunch, and then I'll give it a final, uh, a final buffing. So there you go. N nice little desk, little fall front desk. Very useful little piece of furniture. If you remember, it came out of a barn, covered in filth, and we decided to experiment, see what happened just with these very common items from the hardware store. The cleaner, scratch covered steel wool, wax stick, marker, and then the final beeswax polish. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice antique card table. Uh, it's actually in process. I've been doing a lot of repair work to the veneer on the apron. But this video will concern itself solely with one little aspect of the top. This top, although it kind of needs refinishing, it's not going to be refinished. I'm just going to clean it and wax it. But there's a defect, a chipped area in this front beading and I want to show you how to fill that in and smooth it out without sanding and minimizing any disruption to the surrounding area. I've got a little water in a cup and I'm going to dip my knife in the water and smooth this putty out. Maybe a little too soon. I'm pushing this too fast because I'm making this video. But I'm going to, you got to let this harden like for five minutes or so. You can't let it get too hard until you're done shaping it. So I'm waiting for this to harden just a little bit, not completely hard. I'm continuing to smooth it out with my finger with water on it. I may be a little impatient because I'm making a video. I'm going to st stop and let this sit for two minutes. I'm going to watch the clock and let two minutes go by. I'm going to keep this groove of the beading clean because I don't want to sand it. You can see this area here kept moving when I was trying to form it. I'm just going to press it in gently and let it harden. That kind of concerns me if it doesn't want to stick there, I may have to redo this. Now I'm going to use a Scotch-Brite gray pad with some water. I'm going to very gently smooth this out. It's getting harder, so I'm pressing a little bit more with the Scotch-Brite pad. I want to see the excess around that defect go away. I'm seeing clearly defined edges here, so I know I'm getting it right down to where I want it. It feels really smooth. Now I'm going to get a chisel and try to square off the front edge. Now back to the gray pad. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell if you've got off all the excess and of course I can sand the putty just a little bit. I've got it shaped pretty well. I've got it down to really, really close to where I want to be. If not there, I'm, I think I'll let that harden and maybe just clean up this edge a little bit with some really fine sandpaper. 
Now I've let this dry. Uh, I am going to sand it uh, a little with some 100 and then 150. I've got to smooth this out and get it really round. Now I'm trying to just sand the putty and absolutely minimize how much I hit the surrounding wood. I got it pretty smoothed out before I started sanding. I'm really just trying to achieve a better round over. Okay, I think I've got it as good as I can. I'm finishing it with 150. Now I'm going to brush a uh, just a thin coat of shellac on everything so I can see exactly what the colors are. Okay, I've let this dry overnight. Now I'm going to sand it just lightly with some 500 and then touch up and see if I can get the color right. This is a aniline dye stain. Okay, I've let the stain dry for about 45 minutes and now I'm going to seal it with a little more shellac. Okay, I've let the shellac dry just for a couple of hours and I'm not going to put any more on I just wanted to seal in the staining and what I did. And so now I am going to uh, go over this top with the beeswax polish and some steel wool. This is 4-0 steel wool. And I use a liberal amount of uh, the polish and I'm just applying light but even, very even pressure, or I should say medium pressure, but even. I can feel stuff that's on the surface, uh, grit, dirt, whatever it is, uh, you can feel it giving way and the wood uh, just looks beautiful. Now this is a scratch that's, you know, below the surface. I think it's getting in there though and if that whiteness doesn't go away I'll put some stain on it but there it goes it's it's coming but I'm still keeping my flat hand flat and I'm keeping it even don't go after a spot with one finger you've got to keep it even I think the wax has gotten in there and it looks great now I'm going to go gently here where my repair is. And so after the steel wool, I just go over it with a rag to uh, already saturated with polish, but it's just helping to even it out. You want to really ultimately have as little amount of polish as possible. And then I use a, a paper towel to give it this final buffing. Okay. So as you remember, this top it looked pretty rough, but we just, you know, I just polished it with the beeswax polish and steel wool. It looks great. Uh, one problem, it has this wicked chip out of the front edge here. And I was able to fill that with epoxy putty without really disturbing the surrounding surface. And uh, it may not be perfect, but it looks pretty good. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson, Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is an old storage chest. Uh, it must be 19th century uh, Victorian, at least judging by the handles, which appear to be original. It was in the basement of a building for well over 40 years, uh, and it was locked. I had to take the back off of this to get to the hinges and to get this top off of here. There was nothing inside. And I'm going to repair and refinish this top. But the purpose of this video is to show how you can take an, an old case like this, filthy dirty, there's paint spots on it, there's uh, raw wood showing, and I want to show how to clean and rejuvenate the finish without refinishing. Uh, the first step is going to be just to give it a good cleaning. So I'm going to put a, a eighth of a cup of TSP into about a gallon of hot water. And then because this piece yeah. has been in the basement, I'm just going to put a skosh of bleach in there, kill any mildew. 
So I'm using a gray uh, scrubby pad, but I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm just going very gently. And you always start at the bottom and work your way up. I think that helps prevent streaking. Very lucky already because I see some of the, uh, this cleaner seems to be taking off uh, the white spots. Now this spot's not readily coming off. Uh, I may work on it a little bit later. I may put a little goof off or something on it. I'll come back to that. All right, it's, uh, it's all cleaned. Uh, the wood looks great. Now, I'll let it dry overnight. All right, I've let this dry overnight, and uh, it looks great, except that uh, I've still got one piece of paint right here that didn't seem to come off when I washed it with the water. So, I've got this product that's made to remove paint, dried paint. I'm gonna apply it a little bit, and let's see what happens. So I've continued dabbing this on. Now I'm going to take my small scraper and just scrape very lightly. I'm just trying to scrape the, the crust sort of off the top of this thing. So now I'm going to use the oil and beeswax polish and some 40 steel wool. And I'm counting on the polish to darken up the areas that were a little light because they were bare wood. Now to get into these corners and stuff, I've got a uh, stencil brush I just got at an art supply store. So I put just a, just a little dab of polish in the can. So I've let this polish sit on here for about an hour, and now I'm taking my polish rag, which is already impregnated somewhat with the same polish, and giving it a really good wipe down. And then I'm gonna hit it with a dryer rag, just for a final buffing. So there we go. This. Uh, 19th century storage chest. It's cedar. Uh, I very purposefully did not refinish it. I just cleaned it, gave it the oil and beeswax polish, and uh, it looks pretty good.